One extra. One extra DJ Ace. It is October, so it's Black History Month in the UK, and I'm super gassed, excited to have in the studio with me a real legend icon. When you talk about people that shape and shift cultures and yeah. move them forward, was there from the beginning. I can't believe we got Slick Rick in the studio. What's going on, sir? What's up, DJ Ace? How you been, man? Maintaining, kid. How are you? I'm excellent. You know what? I, I bumped into uh, Slick Rick on the red carpet of Yardie, the Yardie yeah. premiere yeah. in London. Right. And it was an honour for me to meet you then. Obviously, we didn't really have an opportunity to speak to you, but it was, it was surreal to see you in London, even though oh. you're from here. First of all, I want to know, I don't throw the word legends around often. Yeah. Do you, are you one that accepts the term legend? Legend? Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> no, it's nothing. <laughs> you, yeah. you are a legend. Yeah. Yeah. How, how does that feel, man? Well, that's good. You know, we came from the root, the root of the game. You know what I mean? So, you know, when they say legend, that means we, we maintain, we got a little something, a little status, you know? So yeah. I'm good for that. I'm good with that, you know? Yeah. I, and when you guys were like on the corner back then, like yeah. creating this thing that we know and love called hip hop, like did you envision it to be this billion dollar industry that it is today? No, no, I didn't. It was really childhood and high in um, school, junior high school. We just used to bang on the desk and say rhymes. Yeah, you know, just playing around, and then it just evolved into what it is today. So not 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 at first, we didn't know it was gonna be what it is today, but we glad it is because it's like a melting pot for all races, all sexualities. It's become one voice, like Anar says, all I need is one mic. That's it. We here. All I need is one mic. What up, kid? Yeah. Right? Tell, tell us about your your background. I remember the day I found out that you were from originally from the UK, and it blew my mind. And it, I was very proud to have to say that yo, Slick Rick is from where I'm from. Like, where where? Tell us about your background. How did you end up in the Bronx? And and let us know about your journey. Well, my mother or father immigrated from Jamaica to to England, and I was born in 1965 over here, and then um, we moved to America in 1976. Um, and then, you know, so I got part, I was 11 years old when I left. So I got English background and American background. So it's mixed together and it developed what this is. You know what I mean? Like you, you put the two accents together and it, del it this is how it sounds, you know what right. I mean? Like that. So there it is. I, I, was it difficult being a, a British kid in, in New York in the 70s? Yeah, because they they treat me like a square, you know what I mean? I was like a square to them, you know what I mean? I, my skateboard had metal wheels, theirs had rubber, you know what I mean? So I'm, I move like three seconds and they move like 20 seconds, you know what I mean? They right. try to teach me swag, try to teach me how to move and shake. You know, it's like trying to teach a cat how to have a, a mating call, you know? So my mating call got stepped up once I, you know, mingled with other cultures, got into the melting pot game. And, and how did you find hip hop? Hip hop started when I was over there. When I went back in 1976, I lived there, so it didn't start yet. It started like 1978, like that. Like you know what I mean? So I was at the root. I was at the very root. I was still a child. Mm -hmm. So you know, got the vests that teach us how to move and shake, and then we just incorporate it, and each one teach one, and then we just keep it moving. And you know, that's how it is. And how do you hook up with the rest of the guys, Dougie Fresh and the man? We all good, you know what I mean? Yep. He he was he was an established artist. He put me on, so he helped develop my develop my stat where I'm at now. And you know, we just thankful for all of that, you know what I mean? You know, each one pulls one up like passing the baton type of stuff and all that. It is like now when I speak to newer rappers, I can ask them like who are the rappers they listen to mm -hmm. coming up. There was not a lot of rappers before you. So like right. who who influenced your style? Who were you listening to? Who like how where did that all come from? Well, it came from growing up in the environment. Um, the only people that we, we were raised around was like the Cold Crush Brothers. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We are the brothers, don't ask the Cold Crush. Not one, not two, not three, but four. We keep your arms in the air, your feet on the floor. And what we heard on the radio, which was like Curtis Blow. I used to go to dinner, then take the girl to see Tiny Bear against Earl the Pearl and Will. Big O and Jerry West play basketball at this very best. There was, there was Cool Herc. Yeah. He's from. He's originally from Jamaica. Um, there was Flash and the Furious Five. He's also originally from Jamaica. Flash. So yeah, different parts of the Bronx had different people represent different areas. But for where I was from, it was the Cold Crush Brothers. The Cold Crush Brothers. Yeah. And and storytelling is always something that people talk about. Slick Rick. They call you like one of the greatest rap storytellers of all time. When did you start incorporating that into your rhymes? 
storytelling was always fun to me right. before rap. So I used to like tell stories trying to entertain my peers and my parents, stuff like that. It was like the when you watch the beginning of like an Eddie Murphy movie when he, you know, explains that he used to tell, you know, and stuff to make his family before he became famous right. on Raw and all yeah. that type of stuff. So it's pretty much like that. It just developed into rap. You know what I mean? So it's like taking Eddie Murphy and making him a rap star. And he still has the humor, the jokes, and the storytelling, the Richard Pryor, you know what I mean? All that, Red Fire, all that. You know what I mean? So we, we learn from our elders, our statesmen, and we incorporate in ourselves. And that's how I just was, I was, that's my niche. Yeah, like the storytelling. Yeah. It's fun. It, I, I love it. And I'm sure everybody does love it. And you've inspired so many MCs now to tell stories. And you're, you're like an MC that a lot of people go to as yo this is somebody that's inspired me how does that feel oh that's that's a great feeling that people look up to us you know the vets of a certain era you know what i mean so it's, mm. it's good it's a good thing yeah and i know like snoop sites was one of his biggest inspirations and you're, you're on the new snoop album right what was it like working with uh the old double g well snoop represents the west coast of america so right. that's a good thing east coast west coast you know what I mean? you get to you get to um identify with different styles of african-american swag you know what i mean yeah. so it was a good it was a good thing, you know what I mean? Snoop is a big dog, you know what I mean? And we call it big dog, big celebrity. And you know, we just move and shake like that and keep 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 the culture current. See the culture is like it's unsupervised at the root, you know what I mean? So we just gotta talk like this is how we talk now. We like the vocabulary of the human race. You know, we took the English English language, we adopted it, we give it personality, and we talk like this now. We are like the melting pot, like how how Nas says one mic all it needs one mic. We like that, one mic. One mic. Um, like your swag, we gotta talk about it. Like is that was there a specific somebody that what inspired your swag when it comes to the jewelry, how you mm. dress? Cause there is no other slick rick. Like the swag is untouchable and mm. it's unmatchable. And un and copy like no one tries to do you like where does that come from? It come from being raised around you know Jamaican elders, I see and that African American elders, right. and you know the environment you're in. You know what I mean? Like if you check that, if you check the fashion industry, it's not too many fashion industries that have. African American labels like a Ralph Lauren or a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's a, like it's mad undergroundish. You know what I mean? But they're still there. So the elders teach us swag. The elders teach us how to how to move how to move and shake in the fashion industry. What colors work with what other colors on brown skin? And until we get that open, and you know what I mean, this is how we move. You know what I mean? And we take fashion industries like Louis Vuitton, Gucci. We try to excel them. We try to say, listen. There's there's mad there's mad opportunity out here for you, you know. Make 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 underwear, make this, make this. Make, we, that's what Dapper Dan was trying to say, you know what I mean. Right. So that's how we move and shake on the underworld type tip. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to know. I, like, I don't think I've seen you in the same like all of this jewelry that you got on today is stuff I haven't seen you in before. Is, right. Like how much how much jewelry do you actually own? Old enough to make an impression, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's not allowed to tell you the prices. You know <laughs> let's, what not, I mean? let's not do the prices. Okay. Yeah, I but can't it's tell a the lot. price, but it's, I gotta make I gotta make enough to make an impression. You say, say, fan, like how you know how the how the royals have tiaras. Yes. You know, the black man gotta have something to represent. I represent status. You know what I mean? So, like when you hear a lot of rappers say we like billionaires or we move up to billionaire status, you gotta look at too. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we gotta keep certain things in cat's face so they can see status, wealth, swag, fashion, all that. Is there a favorite piece you have though? I just bought a new piece. It's an Africa plate. It's like the size of a. It's like it's like size of a, a piece of paper, like you like write an a, like yeah. an A five four piece of paper. Yeah, it's like a nice big piece, kid. It's, and where you wear it on, on your chest? Yeah, I wear it on the chest. You know wow. what I mean? And I floss it around. Let let cats know this is the future of rap. The rap industry. This is the future of swag, daddy. How meow. heavy? How heavy is that? Don't forget the meow. Me meow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> how heavy is that? Uh, I don't know well, Anywhere between Two and five pounds Wow like One of my favourite Slip room moments I saw you uh, On uh, uh, Fate of Black DVD And you were giving Ghostface Yeah uh, Your jewellery Right You know what I mean Like I, I love when I see Other rappers around Like especially The younger rappers They they really get excited About hanging out With Slip Rick Like who are some of The, the people that you Still hang out with uh, When I, Well I grew up In the era of LL Cool J oh. Rakim Big Daddy Kane Um of course, you know, Dougie Fresh, in that era, I came, I came with that era. Then we, 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 we moved with everybody. Run DMC, we, we all over the place. Every, yeah. we met everybody. We, we, we were like a family. You know what I mean? And on the swag, dad, on secret squirrel tip too. So you know how it go. 
the, the, the classic Lardy Dardy, one of the most sampled records ever. Yo, peep this, Lardy Dardy, we like to party. We don't cause trouble, we don't bother nobody. We're just some men that's on the mic. Yeah. I mean, I mean those checks must be awesome, by the way. Right. Uh, where you, <laughs> tell us a bit about how you came up with that. But in, in 1983-84, that was big, that was big, that was big noise at that time, you know. Yeah. Right now, it may not be smut, but you know, because that's like 40 joints. But yeah, back then, it was a problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was Dougie Fresh and me, and we were doing the beatbox, no music. It's like I'm talking to you right now. Right. You would just go, boom, and i just say, Lottie Dotty, we like to party, we don't know us trouble, we don't bother no party, like that. And the next day, we just put it on on in the studio, and it's so like it was a record. Wow. So, like how we talking right now, right. If, if we would take what we, this conversation and and, and, f, and and put it on violin, and it, and, and violin, violin, no, and it's sold. Yeah. This is how I'm saying. So we started from that with absolutely nothing, no no instruments, no nothing. Just two people doing our thing, and it went to the stratosphere. So it just showed you that if two people can just use their their voices and their beatboxing, we can make we can make a living. You know what I'm saying? That's what we did back in '85, like that. We it was ruckus. We went gold and platinum, all that, and it's the most sample record to this day. So it just shows you, worst case, worst. You know, we can move like that. Do you know how many times it's been sampled? Is there a number that you can sample? I, I couldn't tell you. No. Brother, but they say it's like. One of the top five most sampled records of all time. That's crazy. And you have to clear all of those records, I'm, t- I'm sure. Well, we try. You know, my wife handles all of that stuff. Yeah. 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 Have you ever said no to anybody? Money? No. <laughs> Cut the check, son. I'll Cut the say. check. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 30th anniversary of uh, the Avengers of Slip Rick. Um, amazing that, I mean, mm. people still class, class that as one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. What does that album mean to you? Um, that was my root era, you know what I mean? It shows me that, listen, if you you have something, you know what I mean? And if you can make it here and you can keep this up, you got the formula, then keep it moving like that. You know what I mean? And pretty much that's how I've been moving. Like, Lottie Dottie was first in the, the Great Adventures and all that. And then it shows me that I have a, you know, I have an outlet to make a good living and then just keep it moving like that. Yeah. Yeah. D- during your, your peak, you went away for a little while. Yeah. What, what did that situation teach you? Well, styles was changing and different things was happening at the time, you know what I mean? So you it was like each one teach one on the rap tip, I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you had, you know, styles change and it gets more complicated, the patterns and stuff like that. So you incorporate different styles and you keep on with the humor and the stories. And as for the prison, prison is like a it's like a it's like a, a learning experience that, you know, you know, you in an environment that's full of low income and crime and drug and drug addiction and, sh- and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's it's your it's, it's good. It's like it's a hard walk to stay on that Johnny Cash walk the line tip. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna run into things. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. And then you know, as long as you can come out of it in one piece and keep it moving, you know. And now when you when you got out, there's a lot of rappers have reached out to you because I remember you jumping on a lot of records as soon as you came out. What was that like for you? Were, were you ready to go? Yeah, you know, first you have that nervous energy, you know right. what I mean? Because, you know, you got your comp- your competition and stuff. But then once you find your niche again, once you find, you know, once you look at it from a different perspective, like, it's not really a competition thing. It's about painting your Monets, painting your Van Goghs, you know what I mean? Then you find, because it's variety. Hip-hop can be variety as long as you don't get caught up too much in the competitive edge, you know what I mean? Right. And then you just do your Van, you just do your Van Goghs, your Monets, you know what I mean? You just go watch out for a chick trying to cut your ear off, chill. <laughs> I don't this, fam. Is there anything you dislike about 2019 hip hop though? 2019 hip hop is is not really. Once in a while they make a they make a hot record, but you know, like let's say if I was put it on a scale, like 75% ain't cutting it and right. 25% maybe cutting it. You know what I mean? So like the industry is designed to lower minority swag as relevance. You see what I'm saying? If you want to keep it 100, you see, let's say, let's say R&B singers. R&B singers now is running things. You know what I mean? But And hip hop is like behind R&B singers. But in reality, R&B singers are behind rappers. But it's not, It's you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like watching Beyonce and Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Like we know that Jay Z is the man, but he's he, but he's being pushed behind Beyonce. No diss to neither one of them. You know what I'm saying? And like that. You know what I'm saying? So rap rap status is is above all genres of music. It's been like that. It's it started it started going like that. That's where rock vanished and country and all that. 
R&B is always second place to rap, but a lot of people try to push R&B in front of rap and make it seem like, you know what I'm saying? That's why you see a lot of concert with a lot of female R&B singers and you know and a top top bill and all this type of stuff. But in reality, the melting pot is rap. Rap is the one like Mana says, the one mic. So I'm saying this is the youth. This is what the youth want. The youth wants rap first, R&B second. So I'm saying we, I mean, we're running out of time. This has been absolutely awesome to me. Uh, but one question I really do want to ask you, though, is yeah. like, what do you remember about Mitchum? Because that is where I'm from, Mitchum. South London. Okay. I'm like, I'm right by there. What yeah. do you remember about Mitchum back in the day? Okay, well, Mitchum is where I was was raised, and, and you know, my mother, father, but you know, they came from Jamaica. They they settled there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was are they still there? No, no, no. Oh. They they're in America, oh, Jamaica, okay. and um, yeah. So I remember being a child, you know, like that. Um. Mitchell Surrey over there by Collierswood train station hey, area. You know Collierswood, what I mean? Wood, shout out. Yeah. So, yeah, I was raised over there. There's a school over there I used to go to. The whole environment over there. The whole okay. chilly stuff. There used to be a white group called the Rookies we used to be afraid of. <laughs> 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 little things you remember. Right. You know what I mean? I used to ride a little bicycle. You know, once you got a flat, that was it for me and the bike. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Maybe mom was looking out for me. You know, he's like, nigga, ride that bike out there. They're going to take that shit. <laughs> you know? So, and little things like that, you know? Little piece of the neighborhood is still there Dope, man. and like that yeah that's a bit amazing Mitchum South London represent we love yeah. that Slick Rick it's been an absolute pleasure man thank you very much for joining us thank you. and uh, congratulations on the anniversary of the album I and mean, I can't wait to hear the new music if you enjoyed this like and subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date for more great audio and video from the BBC listen on sounds watch on iPlayer